Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Whole Grains Virtual Cooking Class. I am Charlotte, and joining me, as always, as usual, my friend, Chef Scott Tompkins. Uh, I, I was chewing the last of a chocolate that I had set, that somebody had set in front of me, and I didn't share it with you, but I'm here. I'm excited uh, I want to be some here. Uh, I should have. I should. You want one? Here, I'm no, I'm, to you. I know. I don't have time for that. But <laughs> yes. Hey, real quick before you get started, I yeah. want to make sure you say those of you that are just joining us for the very first time, these classes are 100% live. What you see, there's live and uncut. Yep. We do it all live. Uh, if you want to go see what happened in the past classes, we've been doing this for a year. So as you can see, Charlotte or I or any of our celebrity chef guests or Wine Stewart, simply go to our YouTube yes. channel, youtube.com slash H-E-B. Check out all the fantastic content. Yes. And if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget, you may see Charlotte hand and pick up things like the things she's got in her hand. Yeah. And these things, a lot of things are shoppable. You can simply click on the link and it'll take you to it via the power of the interweb, like that borosilicate yes. casserole oh, dish. One more oh, time. that borosilicate. There it is. There's the... All right, Charlotte, we're yes. ready. Do it. Okay, so whole grains. So we are going to do some great... Recipes today, so we're still in January. It's still the new year, new you, right? Right, everyone's That's sort right. of making up for the things we did during the holidays. The past you did <laughs> that now future you has to pay for. That's exactly right. Um, so I thought that we would take a great approach to sort of, you know, healthier eating or better choices and talk about whole grains, why they're good for you, but really a culinary approach to two whole grains, right? So first off, let's talk briefly, what is a whole grain? So a whole grain um, is a grain. So typically, um, a, we'll just say what a whole grain is. So the whole grain is the grain is completely intact, right? So it still has um, the bran, it has the, endos, the endosperm, and then the germ, right? Um, and that would be your whole grain. So it's those three main parts. So the bran is that whole, that outside sort of the jacket that holds it all together. The endosperm is going to be like the carbohydrate or that meaty part um, of the grain that gives it energy while the seed is growing. And then um, that, that germ part, that is where um, like a lot of the oils and the fats um, are stored. So when you would process a grain, they would remove that hole, that outside, the bran, and they would remove that germ. And then the germ goes you know, down the line and they make oils from it and lots of other things. Um, the bran, sometimes they recycle it and they put it back into things. Um, and then the endosperm is what um, we would consider, so think of flour, right? That's what would be milled and ground and turned into that beautiful white flour, right? And then when we think about some refined grains versus whole grains, um, think of, we can think of flour. So we think about whole wheat flour and you look at that and it has this like brown color, it's a little bit gritty, it's a little bit grainy, and it has some more texture to it. So that's the endosperm and the bran that's still there. And then you compare that to a white flower, which is sort of like pillowy and white um, and sort of like snow, and it is lacking some of that nutrient, right? Doesn't have that fiber content. Usually they add some nutrients back into some processed flour. But that is my brief summary of whole grains. Whole all right? grains. Okay, so um, culinary approach to whole grains. They're super high in fiber. They're great for digestion. Um, they help keep you fuller longer. Uh, again, fiber, we love that fiber. So it does have some cardiovascular benefits like lowering cholesterol and things like that. Um, but again, our, our culinary approach to whole grains, I want everyone to walk away from this class understanding and knowing how to cook grains. So the three recipes we're gonna do today are going to be a harissa chicken with brown rice and quinoa. Yummy. Love this recipe. We're gonna do cumin dusted um, veggie bowl with some lentils and um, farro. I know lentils aren't a grain, but they're super wonderful and I love them. And then we're gonna do a little breakfast bowl. So oatmeal and quinoa breakfast bowl with a warm apple compote. It's literally like apple pie on top of some oats. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, we're going to get started right away, right now. Um, to start, we're going to go over to the stove really quickly. And um, you're going to see, so up here, I've got some water already boiling. And this is going to be for our farro, so just for the interest in time. Um, and I've got a bunch of pans because a lot of stuff is happening right here. To get started, we're going to marinate some chicken with our harissa. So for those of you that don't know what harissa is, harissa is like a spicy... Um, Middle Eastern condiment. Um, look, here it is right here. See, look at this. It's delicious. If you can't find harissa in the store, you could use like, you could make your own. You could use um, some puree, some piquillo peppers, or you could, you know, take this recipe in a whole different direction and use like chipotles or something like that. 
Yeah, like you described the flavor of harissa as like it's got cumin, coriander, right? peppers, uh, garlic, some lemon juice. It's yep. really, really fantastic. And it's a great uh, kind of, I think it originated in Tunisia, but it's kind of used everywhere. It's, it's kind of got, and there's all different kinds of peppers that can be used in harissa. So it's delicious. It's a little spicy, aromatic. It's fantastic. So I'm going to get my pot ready for um, my rice. I'm going to heat some oil in a Dutch oven. We're gonna start this first before we get into our marinade our chicken. Um, all right, so there's a couple of, there's four different methods that are typically used or that are used to cook grain. So there's the absorption method, the steaming method, um, or absorption or bo boiling, the steaming method, um, the peel off method, and then of course risotto. So the two that we're gonna focus on today is boiling and um, peel off method. Um, peel off method is basically sauteing um, some aromatics and a little bit of oil and, um, then adding in the, uh, in the rice, right? So it's typically found in Mexican cuisine, Indian cuisine, and then some Middle Eastern cuisine. I got distracted with what I was doing. Um, this particular method is my favorite. Um, the sauteing of the grains in the oil and with the aromatics gives layers of flavor, but it also um, coats the grain with the oil and like, pr like almost protects it, if you will, from like, um, overcooking or becoming mushy. All right, so we're gonna add a little shallot to this. So I like, the, you have like a rice cooker, which most people think of like yep. you can cook the rice, which is totally fine, nothing wrong with that, but I'm, I'm, I'm of the camp of 100% like what you just said. Toasting rice yep. gives it flavor. So just gonna add a, yep. another depth of flavor and it's so much better. So again, nothing wrong with cooking a rice cooker if you're just looking to make it simple Absolutely. and easy. But like I'm telling you, if you got the time, toasting it in this method that Chef Charlotte's gonna do is the way to go. Absolutely fantastic. So I actually did this recipe in an instant pot. Um, you definitely don't want to skip the saute step, but you just want to saute it and then um, put it on the grain setting for 18 minutes and then let the natural steam release. So it does work in an instant pot. Um, I've had that thing for over a year and I'm just now learning how to use it. <laughs> I find that Charlotte, right. sometimes, the in, sometimes the instant pot is instant and sometimes it's not so instant. <laughs> depending um, on what it you is cook. tricky because you do have to wait for the thing to heat up and you also have to account for the time of the steam release, which is, you know, you don't It takes time, we're that. building pressure, right? Okay, so I am using a Dutch oven, a heavy, a heavy bottom pan, when I cook rice, or grains for that matter, I always use a heavy bottom pan. And the reason why is that um, a heavy bottom pan ensures even cooking and cast iron is like the best for that, right? So really even heat distribution. Um, I also use a bigger pan than necessary because again, that even cooking, right? So um, the grains are allowed to spread out. They're not stacked on top of each other. They're not mushed together. And I get that really beautiful, um, like, I guess they would be like standalone grains. They're, they're just, they have, they yeah, they're, maintain they're their in integrity, fluffy. right? Oh man, that pan I like, uh, and if you're looking at what kind of pot she has there, it's okay. not a stab, a stab, or a uh, Le Crusade. It is, a, is our fantastic HEB Cocina Ware Dutch oven. It's fantastic, and it's about a quarter of the price of one of those fantastic, fancy uh, cast iron skills. Does just the same exact thing, heavy duty, for about 30 bucks. It's fantastic. Yo, this stove is either like surface of the sun it is. or like a like warm walk <laughs> in the park. Like there's it's no not like forgiving at all. There's no medium. What is it like? Well, it's like 80,000 BTUs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm doing right now is I've um, sauteed my aromatics, right? And I got a little more color on them than I like, but that's okay because we're just layering in the flavor and I've added in the grains directly to that hot oil and I'm toasting them. So as we do this, we're cooking off some of those starches on the outside um, of, of the grain itself. And then we're also encapsulating that grain with the oil. Again, going back to what I was saying, it kind of helps that grain, you know, stand alone. It, it, it kind of lubricates it so it doesn't stick to its neighbor, right? All That's right, we're right. gonna mix, let this sit in here. And I'm at, for this stove, medium high. So I can smell, look, the toasting smells good. Yeah. I know it may, I know it's sometimes hard to get the temperature around that stove, but it does smell really, really good. All right, we're going to keep mixing your this. Garlic, not a bad thing. So what we're going to add to this is we're going to add in some quinoa. 
Uh, if you're not a big fan of quinoa, you can definitely just double up on the brown rice. But I like it. I like the I like the color. I like the texture. I like, you know. Is it also pronounced quinoa? Quinoa? <laughs> quinoa? I, I think it's just quinoa. 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 Um, quinoa. I'm using a tri-colored quinoa. You can use, if you want, if you just have white quinoa, use that, red, whatever. I just like the way it looks, right? And I'm going to do the same thing with the quinoa that I did to the brown rice. So we're going to toast it here. And is, I, I know quinoa is quinoa, now I want to say it quinoa. Quinoa is Now it that's quinoa? how it's going to be said for the rest of the day. <laughs> isn't it, isn't uh, both the brown rice and the quinoa gluten free? Yes, as long as the package says so, um, because some grains are processed in facilities that process wheat. So you just want to make sure that the package says to say that. And quinoa is a complete protein, so it has all of your essential aminos. You mean in quinoa, it. chef? I'm going to say quinoa from now on. Tomato, tomato, quinoa, think. quinoa. Okay, I'm going to let that cook for a couple of seconds. And while that's doing its thing, I'm going to get this chicken marinated. So you're going to marinate glass. the, uh, you're marinating it. Watch Just my rice. Real simple. Super simple. Super, super simple. I don't know. I'm nervous. I'm going to burn my grains. I think I might go back to my grains, y'all. I don't know. I'm nervous. Chef, I got a question on me. Facebook. Do you need to rinse the quinoa before toasting? That is a question great was. question. You absolutely can. There is something on the outside of a uh, of the quinoa called a sopinin, sopinin, which is, but you don't have to. That's a great question. There, it's like has a bittering flavor to it. Either way, either way works. That's a great question. I never do, but you know. I don't either. All right, so mixing this up, and now I'm going to add in. I'm going to add in our stock. We're going to do three cups, three cups of um, stock. I'm using vegetable stock. You can use whatever stock you like. I highly recommend using a stock instead of just plain water. It adds a layer of flavor, which is what you know we talk about that a lot. I'm add a little salt to this, and we're going to do about a cup and a half of liquid per cup of grain. So we've got a cup and a cup. stock in there. Ooh. I find a rule of thumb is if you're doing a, to figure out what stock you want to use, we sell, I know at HB we have veggie, yeah. we have chicken, we have beef, we have turkey <laughs> a lot of times. Um, like kind of whatever complements your, if you're using a beef, you're going to do sliced beef and whatever, you want to use beef broth, chicken, yeah. you want to use chicken broth. But if you're just trying to keep it a little more light on the flavor, vegetable broth is a great one to use like Charlotte's using. Okay, so I have this piece of, piece of parchment paper in front of me, and I am going to make what we call a cartouche. Cartouche. Now, cartouche. I don't know why we have to say it with a crazy, like, French accent, but well, we do. Well, it's French. You Nonetheless. Gotta, you know, you got to pay homage. So, <laughs> so um, the reason why I am using this, uh, actually, I learned this cooking method from Scott Tompkins. It is to help ensure that we have even cooking throughout, uh, throughout this pan. So we're going to make this cartouche, and I'm going to show you to do it. So we do a fold. And we're just going to keep folding it like this. You fold it. I'll tell you the exact you, scientific all right, reason tell us the science for the cartouche. It, chef. You ready for this? This went so, so smoothly in rehearsal. <laughs> all right. you, uh, it's like making a paper airplane, right? right. Uh, so do you see the pan that she's using is a big Dutch oven. So when she adds the liquid, and there's, there's, it's not going to go right to the top, because obviously that would boil over. We want to do that. So there's going to be space in there between the actual rice and the top of the pot. And if you just put a lid on it, it's right? okay, but... For making a peel off, you want really even cooking, and actually you can use less liquid. You put the parchment right on top of the liquid, and that way instead of it just kind of going up and evaporating, so the bottom of the pan gets really nice and cooked and, and, and cooks the right way, the stuff on top would kind of dry out and not right. get cooked. So the parchment ah, aids back. to allow the steam to stay trapped yep. underneath the cartouche and cook the rice evenly. Boom! Okay. Does that work, Chef? That, that was work? brilliant. So basically, we got three things going for us, right? We got a really big pan. Um, we did the peel off method, so the oil, cooking the rice in the oil, the grains in the oil, and then um, our cartouche to ensure that we have a perfectly cooked grain. So you saw how I did that. I folded that, get this guy up, right? And then I just, you know, kind of like you would do the radius, cut it around, right? Cut it to fit your pan. Sometimes um, I have seen people like trace the width of the pan. You could also do that, no big deal. And we're just going to place this guy. Right on top. Might be hard to do that while it's hot, though. Just like so. <laughs> We're going to put the lid on. 
We're going to reduce the heat to a low simmer. So we don't want we don't want any spitting out of the side of the pan. We don't want like huge steam like it's a big train, you know, um, you know, an engine. We just want a little bit, a little bit of steam. All right. We're going to let that go. Will you set a timer for 30, already, 35 I'm minutes? So on it, chef. You we are, get this I in rehearsals. I, I remember. Love you. Okay. All right. I'm on. So I the got recipe you. says 45, 35 to 45 minutes, and that really is going to depend on, you know your burner and then the type of pan that you used, all right? So this meal, everything you're doing, yeah. everything can be done this hour. Everything. You can be sitting yes. down to dinner, enjoying a glass yes. of wine while you're cooking yes. along with Charlotte. It's all possible. All right, so the marinade for our chicken, the harissa. So again, if you can't find those, um, the harissa paste, you can just use, um, you know, chipotle peppers, you can use roasted bell peppers, whatever you like, get creative. Um, I just like the flavor of this a lot. It is really good. So I'm going to throw in my garlic, rough chop, doesn't have to be fancy. That's a real rough chop. Just to get those oils right? going. All right, we're going to add in some chicken. And I'm using the thin sliced chicken breast. Uh, I like it because it cooks really fast. All I right. think it's perfect for weeknight. You don't have to try there. and fuss with it. It's just a quick, it's a quick cook. I really like harissa because I like that it has like a vinegar note to it and like really good spices. I'm a big fan. Um, and you can see like, you could use like um, sambal if you wanted, that could be good. Yeah. So I'm gonna do Chili like two giant tablespoons and then we're gonna do some lemon juice. And if you don't wanna do what Charlotte's doing, having to cut the fresh lemons, if you wanna do it one step easier, you can always go get the fresh squeezed lemon All juice. All right, and then store. <laughs> chopped <laughs> parsley. So I buy <laughs> herbs. Go to my house to die. <laughs> Fresh herbs, yeah. You put them in the back of the fridge and you find like a... I, I do, and then I, and I constantly rebuy them. So I'm like, oh, I need cilantro. And I buy cilantro every time I go to the grocery store. Uh, guess what? Um, I have like 75 things of cilantro that are like... Do you do the thing where like you find them in the back of your fridge and like they've become a puddle in the bag? Yeah. Like where they just kind of They're like soupy and weird. There, I said it. Okay, I'm just going to take this and mix it up like this. Shake, 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 shake. And we're gonna throw this in the refrigerator and let it marinate for a little while, all right? Marinate while we that. get going with something else. Obviously the longer the better, but it doesn't need that long. I am gonna do a quick cleanup over here. You Ooh. could also at this time, if you're gonna do the chicken, yeah. start preheating your grill while that's marinating. Give that a little time to marinate, get your grill okay. preheated. I'm gonna get rid of this one and or get your a grill new pan. one. It doesn't have to be outside. It's awful cold outside right now, but you it know. It is. Okay. If you wanna do this recipe in July, so our next recipe that we are going to work on is going to be our farro, uh, our cumin dusted veggies with the farro and lentils, all right? Um, another one of my absolute favorite recipes. Super easy to do. We're going to start with our veggies. Start with the veggies? Yes, we're going to start with our veggies. While you're prepping veggies. the veggies, we had a, we had a question about the, the taste of the harissa. Like, what's the flavor profile of harissa? So while you're doing that, I was just going to say. Go ahead. Basically, it's cumin, coriander, it's lemon juice, it's garlic. It's usually a kind of a spicier red pepper, um, whether you want to use a chipotle, whether you want to use red peppers, whether you want to yep. use chili de arboles and soak them. Um, and then it's usually smoked paprika, some kind of smoky thing, and then it's just olive oil and then salt and pepper. That's basically the kind of the flavor that you're kind of looking for. Yep. Leslie on Facebook, who's kind of looking if you want to make your own. So it's not hard to do. It's just basically a pepper paste. It has more of that cumin and coriander uh, so good. flavor in it. It's really good. All right, so for our vegetables, I'm gonna do some red onion. We're gonna do some Brussels sprouts, butternut squash, some basic squashes. If you don't like squash, don't use squash, right? This is just a really basic recipe. Um, these are flavors that I like, so it's what I'm gonna use, but if you're not into it, don't, don't use it. If you're not into red onion, use a white onion, right? Doesn't really, doesn't make too much of a difference. And the cut doesn't have to be exact because we're just gonna, you know, just mix it all up and roast it. You do want the vegetables to be roughly the same size, and I'm doing, I guess it would say, like, what, a quarter inch? And that's for cook time, Chef. You want to make sure they yeah. all cook at the same. All right, so here is our red onion. Look at that. Again, if you're not a big fan of red onion, no worries. Oh, but it tastes so oh, good it when it's so roasted. it's so sweet, and it has those little yeah. charred bits. All right, so uh, when it comes to zucchini or when it comes to squash, um, you could buy it like this. Right, and you can get in these little coins or the medallions. Personally, um, not so much a big fan of the round medallion. They do they do roast relatively nicely. Um, I'm more of I like to cut out that rib, that that center of the zucchini the squash. Center so seed. 
Let me show you guys how I do this. So basically, I'm just going to tip tail, right? And then I cut it into half, and then I cut it into like quarters again, like this. And what I do is I'll show you my, my cut. This part of the zucchini right here, this is where all the moisture is. This so is where all that water is. Yep, and so as you are um, roasting these vegetables, that water's gonna evaporate and it steams the vegetables and you never get that like solid, um, like char, that like roasted, you know, you just- Yeah, a lot of these. moisture in yeah. the oven. A lot of, you can see that when you roast, or we roast vegetables in the oven with a lot of yeah. moisture, like you open the oven and it gives you the steam burn because there's yeah. so much water trying to evaporate. So like, Steam is the you know enemy of a of a good, of good caramelization. All right, then I just give it a kind of like so on the bias, chef. On the I bias, like that. on the bias. That's my secret, y'all. This is also perfect for like sautéed. Shapes are fun. Shape, it's unique. Yeah. It just gives more texture to the overall dish, right? You know. You'll also see me do that with cucumbers. Yep. Because that's do just a cucumbers. personal preference, right? If you're going to slice cucumbers, you do it on the bias. You get more surface area to dip in your ranch, your hummus, or whatever. you got to do go. it on the bias. Okay, some zucchini. Do you all want some yellow squash in there? Yeah, do, just do it all, Chef. All right. I want it all. I want the full. Okay. We, we talked about eat the rainbow. Do the, the rain, rainbow. Give me the rainbow. Again, just kind of. It's like Lucky Charms, all like shapes and sizes. <laughs> Let's see. All right, and then we're going to add in some butternut squash. So <laughs> in H-E-B, butternut squash comes in every, any which way you'd want it, right? I think it comes in halved, it comes in diced, big dice, little dice, frozen, all the different ways. But I figured that, I mean, literally, like, it comes like this, the Brussels sprouts and the squash already done. Ready but I figured I would show you guys really briefly how to break down how to butcher a butternut squash, right. right? So basically, you're going to take off the top. You're going to take off the tail. It's like, I feel like oh, of all the squashes, <laughs> I, I know, I acorn stronger. squash, spaghetti squash, they're all really, really thick and yes. hard to cut through. So you just got to be really careful you when do. you're trying to And you need to make sure you have really them. good leverage, right? Um, I chose poorly. I chose my weapon poorly, but that's OK. So. You basically want to take this, and there's, there's a part where the squash gets thicker, right? So this bulbous end, and you want to cut that off. So you, now you have these two halves, and you've got these flat surfaces to work with, which is good. Then you're just going to take your knife and peel it like this. I highly recommend using your knife and using this method as opposed to, like, peeling it with a peeler. Yeah. It's easier, and you just Great. have, especially if you have a really sharp knife. So what you end up with is something like this, right? So you've got your two sides. Uh, cut the, the bigger end, the fatter end in half. Remove the seeds. And then you'll just cut it accordingly That's to the size that color. you want, right? Just like this. Just kind of. Can you all see that? You bet. We right. got the sky cam. Rob's got the Ooh, sky, sky cam. cam. We got a sky right. cam view of you chopping the butternut squash. Chop it just like that. And then what you would do with this side, similar, you just cut it down like this. I feel like that's always a side that's a little prettier, more uniform, because it doesn't it have is. The, uh, the giant It is, and people don't center. know what to do with that part, but that's what you do. It's really easy. All right, and then we just cut this like this. And if you don't want to do it, just like Charlotte showed, you just go pick up the just ones that are already pre-diced. Pick it up. All right, just like that. It looks like mango, when it the comes, color's so bright. It's so beautiful. When it comes to butternut squash, or like these hard squashes, I typically buy them whole because I don't want to be, I don't want to commit myself. Well, yeah, once you've cut it, it's kind of got, yeah, it's got right? a, you know. Okay, so just for the, you know, all intents and purposes, I, I bought Brussels sprouts that have already been cut for me, so. Washed yay and ready me. to go. Ready to go. I'm just going to throw these guys right there. Look at that. Recycle that guy. And then olive oil. Lots of olive oil. When I roast vegetables, Always. I mean, it's like a generous dousing of olive oil. To. We're going to do cumin, which is one of my absolute favorite spices. It's just a great spice. It's really, so good. It's a, just a great warm spice. It goes, it's like, it goes like Middle Eastern, but then it can go Latin, Mexican, Southwestern. Southwestern, yep. And then, of course, garlic powder because, yes, right? We're going to give this guy some, a generous amount of salt. 
When you spill the salt, do you? Um... Nope, I just spill more. Okay. That's what I do. I'm not superstitious at all, Charlotte. Okay, you're not? Nope, I walk under Neither. ladders. I try to get- Open umbrellas and doors. <laughs> I do okay. all the time. My wife goes crazy. And I let black cats walk in front of me all the time. Okay, all Don't right. Don't bother me at all. So there we I've go. I've broken plenty of mirrors. This is absolutely beautiful. I love it. You could throw an eggplant. You can put whatever you want in here, right? I'm like absolutely obsessed with Your this Your favorite blend. veggies. Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I've got my oven preheated to 400, and a little trick that I use is actually heating up my pan at the same time, right? And the reason why I do this, so I'm using the borosilicate. This is a really great um, baking dish or casserole dish because it's so wide, right? It's perfect. All right, so the reason why I heat that up is that when I start to sear my vegetables or roast my vegetables, I'm, I get like, the, the vegetables hit the pan and they immediately start cooking, right? So we don't get that steam happening um, and we get that really, really good, I'm looking for a towel. Sear. Sear. And it just helps the cooking time be a yeah. little less because you've already got a, you've got a really hot vessel. Okay, y'all ready? I'm ready. This is gonna be so pretty. Be Can't wait. Here we go. Wait for the sizzle. Did y'all hear that sizzle? It was pretty good. See a little, See? little steam wisp coming up. All right, directly into the oven. All right, there we go. Okay. How are we on time, Tompkins? Chef, your uh, rice has 23 and a half more minutes. Okay. Sounds good. All right, so the grains that we're going to do with this recipe, so it's the lentils. And we know the lentils are not a grain. They're a legume, but they're super healthy and super easy to cook. I went ahead and cooked mine ahead of time. So for this, we're just going to cook the farro. And I want to talk briefly about the farro that I'm using, right? So I am using a quick cook grain, all right? So this is Italian farro. Tell Central us about market. farro. farro talk, it, talk about farro. I love farro. It originates from, it is a wheat. It originates from Italy. Um, we make some heirloom pasta out of it. It's actually really nice. I think what the original was like, there's immer, yep. farro, and... Can't yep. remember the other one, but nope, yes. I'm with you. You got all the answers. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> all right, so we are using a quick cook grain, and what that means is, I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you all some examples. All right, so in this hand right here, we have just the whole grain that hasn't been processed at all, right? Then over here, we have the quick cook grain. And all that happened was they, they mechanically, you know, added a little bit of heat, and what they did was they, they just cracked open the whole of the grain to allow it to cook faster. So typically, they haven't changed anything about the um, nutritional content of it. It still maintains the same amount of fiber, the same amount of nutrients, but they just made it easier for it to start cooking, right? So right here, whole, the whole grain, and then this guy you can see, still whole grain, but they just open the door, right? So this will cook a little bit faster. 45 minutes, 10 minutes, all right? So I have some water already boiling over here. And I have added in a little bit of salt. We're going to add a little bit more salt. I got your answer, Charlotte. It's farro piccolo, which is from the icorn. I there you go. Farro you. medio, which is the emmer. And okay. then the farro grande, which is the spelt. Oh, my God. Who They're answered that? Who knew that? Somebody way smarter than I way could Way smarter than me. To be. All right. I'm adding a little bit more water because I let that boil out. So we're going to do about two cups about 1.75 cups per one cup of grain. We're just gonna add this guy, well it's not boiling now because I added Chef, more. you repeat how long the veggies go in the oven at 400? What, um, what was your time? Till they're done. Uh, no, 30 to 40 minutes? You think like 20 so to about 35 to 45 minutes, yeah. I like them nice and crispy, caramelized. Yeah, right? Caramelization I just cooked it, like, cooked the heck out of it. Like, I like those charred ends. All right, well, I, I had to add more water, so that's gonna have to come back up. So in the meantime, we are gonna talk about our next recipe while our water comes up to boil. And this is gonna be our quinoa bowl. So um, really quickly, I wanna talk about um, oats. Our quinoa bowl? Tell me when my, will you tell me when my water boils? You bet I will. Okay. I can't see it, but you know what? I've got you a good, I've got, I've got a good nose for boiling water. <laughs> I got you, don't worry. Thanks, Between man. Rob and the sky cam, okay. we got you. Don't All worry. Right. Somebody out there will notice. All right, so our next recipe, our third recipe, is the oatmeal and quinoa bowl. And we are actually using um, steel-cut oats. 
So I know that oats come in all sorts of varieties, and, um, but I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about um, what steel cut oats are and then kind of show you the same thing. So over here is just a regular steel cut oat, and then on this side is a quick cook, quick cook oat, all right? So eight minutes, 20 minutes, all, all right? right. So I, got there is a I got a question. I got a question for you. Okay. This is me asking Go because ahead. I just want to know because I know there's other people out there who are like, all right, hang on. When it comes to like things being like we talk about like oatmeal yeah. being healthy in the morning. Yeah. Will you kind of go through like from those two different cut oats and then the old fashioned yes. and then the quick cook oats? Yes. You'll kind of understand because there's okay. definite differences, especially nutritional value you said earlier. So okay. So steel cut oats. They actually take the oat groat. That's what a whole oat is. And it would look like this, something like this, right? So, like, remember our, our faro? And then they basically, not so, you know, fancy terms, they put in a giant slap chop, 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 right? And they chop it up like this, right? Steel cutters. Steel, yep, exactly. And so you get this sort of rough, like, coarse texture, right? Just like this. If you were to take, like, a quick cook, cook oat, same thing. They've already started that process. They've cracked open that grain, and then they did the, the chopping, right? So right. same, same. Right, then you would have the old fashioned So or like your old fashioned oats. rolled oats, right? And if you look at these, you look at these guys, you see how the grain itself has been intact. It's still intact, right? You can yep. see you could see what, what that, that grain would actually look like. And then they actually like, you know, mechanically they, they roll it. They physically like with Big giant, steamroller. Yep. Like and that's exactly over. how they get that, right? And then of course you have some quick some quick cook oats, you know, like that minute oats. And those don't have as much fiber as say these guys do, right? So So it's an important distinction yeah. because I think people think steel cut oats are like why steel cut? Well they're yeah. cut with steel like it's a steel slap chopper, big steel right? slap chopper. And then you've got the oh, rolled go. oats that are literally kind of steamed and rolled and pressed. The actual grain and the quick cook oats are just the faster but less Yep. Nutrient dense. Can you say that? Yep. Or less fiber? Wait, say that one more time before less I... Less nutrient dense, the quick cook oats? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, so I've got I'm my tracking. farrow in there. We're going to bring this to a boil, and we're going to let a, then a low simmer. Don't worry if after 10 minutes you still have water left in, um, left in the pot. Um, farrow is different than rice, right? So it doesn't... The way it absorbs um, water, the way it cooks is totally different. All right. It's so much chewier and more yes. al dente, but it's such a good grain. So tasty. Okay. In this pot right here, I am going to start our liquid for our steel cut oats. And what I am you, actually what using. What you got there, Chef? What is uh, that? So this is some oat milk. Um, I figured that I would make this a more plant-based plant -based option. Um, their original recipe calls for, you know, uh, cow's milk or, or, you know, traditional dairy milk. But I thought that, you know, might as well mix it up a little bit. Hey, we've um, got all these great alternative milks, right? It's like right? they're taking over the world, alternative right? milk. Right. Um, in an effort to be more plant-based, Charlotte, yes. I want to get your take on this because yes. I know you're, a, you're, you're in the world of, of, me, of health me, and tell wellness. Me, tell me. Um, I decided this year to be more plant-based by actually – upping my intake of wine, Vanilla. therefore upping my intake of plant-based, my plant-based diet. Like, does that fit within that realm? So what I I'm hearing is you would like, you're consuming more plants in the form of juice that has been fermented. Yeah, but technically, isn't it still, am I, I'm still going plant, I'm adding Te more Technically, plants. yes. There's okay. some, that's, that's I, if I follow I your logic, then yes, all right? Okay. Um, and then fermentation is good for gut health. Okay. Did there everybody we go. hear that? Did I see how we that? just justified that whole thing. I just want everybody to right. know that. You're so welcome. In 2022. this pot right here, I've got four cups of oat milk. Again, you can use whatever alternative milk you want. There's coconut milk, whatever it is. Um, just make sure that, uh, and the ratio is not going to change depending on the milk. Um, I know the recipe calls for three cups, but I prefer a um, smoother, more creamy oatmeal. So I'm gonna add a little bit more liquid. Um, don't go any less than three cups, all right? So I've already added um, a little bit of vanilla and some Karinje, um cinnamon. So you've got which some is cinnamon like and a, some one vanilla. Of the sweeter cinnamons, yes. Cinnamon, vanilla, oat milk, and the oats right yep. now. Yep, yep, yep. I'm running out of space. I like it. Okay, and by oh, the way, I, I think a, a lot of people, salt. a lot of people just got a brighter kick to their 2022 because they're like, oh, this is how I can add more plant base. Yes. I'm going to drink more wine, like Scott said. Like, we're, like we just got the, and we got right. the seal of approval from Charlotte. Like what so I did. We're, I'm so, you're welcome. Okay. See? Okay. I learned so much when I come to these classes. It's ridiculous. I'm so glad you show up, Tompkins. <laughs> <laughs> that 
that H-E-B lady endorsed wine as part of, I mean, according to the Mediterranean diet, a uh, proper a serving. Diet. So there we go. Come on. Um, okay. So we're going to bring up our um, oat milk to a nice simmer before we add in our grains. In the meantime, we're going to get our apples ready. I love this recipe. We are literally eating apple pie filling on top of oats. It's absolutely amazing. Um, in front of me, I've got two different types of apple. I believe I'm using some Snapdragon. And is snap this my I thought garlic? it was Dungeons I and Dragons. Garlic on is this? that the apple? The apple is consist called like Dungeon, Dungeon Master? Dungeon, Dungeon. Uh, no, they're, they're called, Snapdragon. Like, is it a Snapdragon? <laughs> These are, are not the sure Game of that? Thrones apples that we carry. Um, I am using an Evercrisp and a Snapdragon. And the Snapdragon is really nice and pairs well because it has notes of um, vanilla and I think spice. Okay, so for my apples, I am just going to slice them. So skin I'm on. I'm leaving the skin on. Wash these guys, and we're going to... I don't think I've ever had the Snapdragon apple. I'm going to have to go taste it. Mm -hmm. I, we, have, I've, we have so many varieties of apples at HB. If you walk our apple out there, it's amazing, but I don't think I've ever tried the Snapdragon. Really? If it's so I remember, so Do you remember when you were a kid, Dragon, and like Dungeons the only Dragon. apple option you had was like green or red? And now it's like all these... like, And maybe it's just since I've become... A chef, or since I started walking the aisles Paying more. Paying attention more to the food. We eat a lot of Kanzi apples at our house. Kanzi's a really good apple. Yeah. I like the Cosmic Chris. Those are hard okay. to find. A lot of times they're very, they go in and out quickly. Again, I poured, I chose poorly with my knives today. We, I think you said it last week that. I tried to hone it, but I, I, I need to sharp just sharpen it. Sharp knives save lives. All right. They do. How's everybody doing over here? This guy's going really nicely. All right, I'm going to reduce this guy in the back and give him a cover. Keep an eye on that. Make sure he doesn't boil over. I'm going to give you a stir. Ooh, don't do it. Don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass right, me Charlotte, on TV. Don't embarrass me on TV. <laughs> we have a question. Go Sherry, ahead, Sherry on Facebook. Hi, Sherry. Would like you to kind of demystify. Will you talk a little bit about the alternative milks? And I know when you walk into an HEB now, it seems like... Okay. Half of the display is dairy milk, traditional, and then half this is all this brand new milk. So everything from macadamia, oat, almonds, yeah, soy. Yeah. Like, will okay. you talk a little bit about some of this? I mean, specifically. Any. Any of any, them? All. Any and all. So we want to talk about like the nutritional benefits or just how they make them or I am not a alternative milk expert. I know that soy milk and coconut milk have been around the longest. Um, they are they're pretty, you know, pretty good. They, you know, they they've been fortified with some vitamins, some nutrients, right? So you can get the same, you know, benefits from as you would from normal milk, but they're cup for cup, most of them are interchangeable, right? So like you want to make sure that if you are doing a savory dish that you want to avoid a sweetened or a, you know, vanilla, but... I feel like it had to come. You said it just a second ago. Like, it was like soy milk, and the person was soy milk, and what was the other one? Coconut? Almond? Coconut. So, like, it became like a, if you didn't like soy milk or the flavor it did... Almond milk, yeah. Yeah, like, all of a sudden, these all these different nuts make... Yeah. Like macadamia, I, I love macadamia milk. It's Ooh, really, really good. So but cashew good. milk is really good, too. So, like, there's all these different... So, I think as... As we kind of evolved, it was like, well, I don't like almonds, or I'm allergic. Like, what about this nut, this nut, this nut? So I think it just kind of evolved into all these different things. And I think they all have great places in different ways. I think you just have to kind of try them. Um, I mean, for this recipe, we're using oat milk for the oats, and we're just doubling down on that oatiness. Um, what they do on how they make it is typically they'll soak whatever, you know, nut or grain it is, and then they puree it, and then they strain it out a bunch of times. Yeah. Not an expert on that, though. It's actually easy to make nut milks at home. It just is kind of a lab laborious right. process. We're going to let that go for a few minutes, and we're going to talk about our apples. So I've got my apples in here. Man, the apple was so Sherry, tasty. Sherry, if we didn't answer your question, let us know. Yes, we're happy please, to, we if you need more further. detail. Okay, in here, what I'm going to do. Right here, I have some molasses and maple syrup. So the like molasses that. is going to be this, like, beautiful, bitter, sweet note that complements, like, the apple and the tannin on the outside of that skin. We're going to add a little bit more vanilla because vanilla, you know, it's like when you think you have enough, just add a little bit more. Kinda I'm, like I'm telling you, look, when you cook. wine, right? When he thinks he's had a, li <laughs> you know, a little bit more. Okay. Look, vanilla extract, there's alcohol vanilla extract. It'll cook out. So I'm okay. always a big proponent of going, We're look, if you want to taste it, man, you got to add, you got to add a good amount. <laughs> Some lemon zest and lemon juice. Yeah, I bought All you, right. Charlotte. I bought you the juice, and she doesn't want to use my juice. I, I don't. I want to use. Lemon juice. She's I want to use using lemons, which is fine. I just was trying to, you know, trying to make your life easier. I have the whole fruit. All right, just, gosh, cut me some slack, man. 
I'm trying to take on a guilt trip. Pack your I bags. Know, pack your bags. All right. Then we're going to add in our lemon juice. And so the acid is going to just bring this really nice brightness. So the acid's going to like work with the, the bitterness and the sweetness. It just brightens. Acid just brightens everything. And when I think about lemons, I think about like something bright and delicious, right? I'm going to do a little bit more zest because so I chef, like. So chef, from a health standpoint, yeah. we're not, this is like, you're kind of making an apple pie filling that yes. we see for this oatmeal, which is kind of yes. being more kind of more toward healthy. We're going to yes. lean toward that. But you're not adding two cups of sugar nope. and all the butter and all that nope. stuff. You're literally just adding a little bit of natural sweetener in the yep. molasses and the maple syrup, the natural sweetness of the yep. apples. Yep. Cook it all down in the vanilla and cinnamon. So it's not as yep. bad as you might think of like when you think Absolutely. of like an apple pie filling. And there's always something I talk about, like there's the spices that we're using. So the lemon and, and I tell people this all the time, close your eyes. And if I were to describe, say the three spices or these three flavors, what would you think of, right? So um, lemon, cinnamon, um, nutmeg, right? What do you think of? Lem lemonade? No, you don't. No, you don't. I fail that You're supposed one? to Dang think it. of some sort of like, you know, a delicious baked good, right? Like pie. And so we're using these like these spices and these flavors that have the illusion of sweetness without actually adding sugar. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Good. So you don't like my nutmeg lemonade idea? I mean, I'll try anything once. Yeah, All right. I'll see, I'll see so what happens. Let's try. We'll try. Maybe that'll be a recipe medium, for next time. Medium high heat. We're going to saute these apples. I can't win for losing with you today. For what? What are you talking about? <laughs> Is it not boiling? What, 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 what are you? What are you? <laughs> oh, no, nothing, nothing. Okay, we got it. All right, so I want to bring this guy to a simmer, and you'll start to see once our oats start cooking, you're going to see it start to thicken, all right? And that all that those little brown specks, in case you're wondering, that's the cinnamon that clumped up. I didn't whisk it very well, but it'll cook in, all right? Let this go. How is our timer in. on? Oh, your rice, Chef. My you got rice. eight minutes on your rice. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm going to add a little bit of oil to the pan for um, our apples just to sort of grease the wheels a little bit. Um, you could add butter if you wanted to. That will give great flavor and round it out. But if you want to stay more plant-based or, you know, vegetarian, we can eliminate um, those animal fats. There's plenty of great um, vegan butters out there. But, okay. Oh, so good. You can smell the lemon juice. Oh, it's so great. And really, the, the lemon zest, right, is one of my, like, absolute favorite things. And I think it's vital to, um, to, like, giving that, like, lemon flavor or that lime flavor or that citrus flavor. So um, that's where, like, the essence, that oil is, the essence of the, of the fruit is in the rind. And um, you'll see, like, bartenders will use, um, like, a lighter and they'll gently, like, heat up the, the outside of the fruit and then, like, twist and kind of like spritz it into the glass. And so you get the essence and like the flavor of the fruit without like, you know, affecting the spirit in the, in the glass. So, you know. So what I'm hearing is I need to go to the bar with you and drink more hard alcohol. So I'm trying yes. to get more plants in my body and now I need to go yes. to the bar to learn yes. more about. That's yes. a pretty cool trick though. I like they do that. And it does, it does add something to, you know, we talk about, you know, just, you know, you, like you said, you smell things before you taste them, it's yes. all about creating that experience, and so. Smelling is part of tasting, right? That's where we get the, chef. it's the flavor, right? So like your yep. sense of smell combined with the, you know, five senses gives you the flavor. All right, so you can see our oats thickening up here. These are about 20 minutes. Saute our guys. This is my favorite. You could chop these up into little pieces if you want. I like the whole apple because I think it's beautiful. This will sort of get caramelly and good. You know what? This is going to be real embarrassing. What happened? If my burner was off on my rice. <laughs> oh, well. Why isn't it cooking? It's live. It's live, everyone. <laughs> That's right. No teleprompter, right. no do-overs. Nope, it is what live. it is, right? Okay. So we got our apples going. I'm going to grab this quinoa. We are going to add this quinoa right here um, to our steel cut oats. If you wanted to use dry quinoa, definitely could. Just make sure that you add um, maybe a cup or a cup and a half of extra liquid. And you would start it when you started um, the steel cut oats. I'm adding this in here because this is like a no-brainer, right? It's, I like that method you're adding yeah, in there. Let me, like, let me ask you, though, does right? it taste, do, for people that are like, uh, quinoa in my oatmeal, is that going to be... No, no, like no, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. And the truth is, is that, I, I said this when I was talking about the rice, I love 
the dy like the diversity and the dynamicness of like the different textures of grains, right? So like quinoa has this little like it's almost like they pop in your mouth. I love it. I love it. One Thank of my you. favorites, right? Hey, real quick, Chef, the yeah. uh because we you, we talked about this earlier uh in rehearsal. I don't know if we mentioned it, but we talked about uh we alluded to it earlier about the gluten free, like the rice is gluten free. Yeah. We have, but there's like for the oats and the and the stuff like that, like you may not see all oats are gluten free. The problem is they're not certified gluten free because That's right. if they're manufactured in a facility that yes. has other wheat products, they can't technically yes. call it gluten free, right? Because yes. it has been around other wheat products. Yes, because but there could be some cross contamination. Technically, they, an oat is gluten free, right? Yes. For those people that are wondering. Okay. Yes, and um, the package will the the package um, will say so. It'll yep. uh, definitely tell you like processed in a facility that processes wheat, right? Or if it is gluten free, it'll say gluten free product, right? So yep. the, the the product will tell you. All right. Is it working now, Chef? Got the spurs to it? You got the heat? Yeah, the no, I, my rice. My rice was off, bro. Oh. Well, you got four minutes left. You think it'll be done? I could have not said anything, and then y'all <laughs> never would have known. Never would have known. And we'd have watched you crunching on the rice. Right? Going, What's that noise? Like nothing. I'm okay. Let's check these grains over here. So you can see. They've kind of opened up a little bit, not so much. We're going to let these go a little bit longer. Man, the Faro thing, you can tell liquid. when Faro is done because it sort of like gets roughly, roughly like, a, like tail feathers, like chicken tail hen feathers. They're kind of roughly in. I don't think these. I've ever heard it described like that, but I kind of like All right. that. I've got my grill on. We're going to get ready to grill some chicken. I want everything to come out on the same time. We got our oats are going. Spray this oh, keep guy. your eye on your oats, chef. I got it. All right. Our rice is going. I'm going to let the rice go a little bit longer because uh, I didn't have it on. Chef All Christy right. on Facebook would like to know, is it possible to overcook your oats and how would you know? That's a great question, and yes. Um, if you overcooked your oats, basically um, it's like overcooking rice. Um, but it all depends on like a texture that you like. So if you want that, like, if there won't be a, how do I describe it? So um, <laughs> It loses its bite, but it also has like a gelatinous, like, it's gelatinous. Does that make sense? Christy, they used to tell us that if you overcook your oatmeal, it's now called porridge. Porridge. There you go. <laughs> so if you overcook it, it becomes really watery, kind of like it has that like mushy, like all the stuff kind of breaks down. You've got porridge. Chicken. So it's possible, but I think with steel cutouts especially, it, it's not, it all depends on how much liquid you get. You overcook right? those starches and it just gets, it's, it, yeah. yeah. Ooh, look, this is looking really good. All right, I'm going to throw... This chicken on, this is chicken that I've been, I've let marinate for a little while. God, I love these thin cut chicken breasts. Look at that. These are going to be done in like no time. That's what's great about uh, those for the week, weeknight, just quick cooking. Yes. I know everybody guy. is time starved. I know it is getting harder and harder right? to try to like be intentional with things. And so the easier we can make it and the easier H-E-B can make it on you, uh, the better. That's why all these great value added vegetables you can go pick up. Stuff is already chopped for you. If by all means in 2022, you're like, you know what, we've got to, Got to be more intentional with what I'm going to do. You're going to start practicing those knife skills and cutting things from scratch and doing all that vegetable butchery. We're with you. Yes, we're here we are. to support you. All right, I'm going to get a couple of things started for our plate up. Um, like I said before, I had already cooked my lentils. Hang on a second. Um, go ahead. What is that bowl? This bowl. Will you please tell me about that this bowl? bowl? That bowl is probably going to get. That may you may not see that bowl tomorrow. That may be a five finger mm -hmm. discount. Uh, I didn't buy it, so I won't be mad. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Tompkins is running his own H E B out of his garage. <laughs> well, the good news is I'm not selling it. I'm just holding on to <laughs> All it. All right, I'm going to put some lentils <laughs> in the bottom of my bowl. I cook these ahead of time. Basically, for lentils, you just want to pick out all the stones, give them a little rinse, and then boil the ever living. Heck out of it. But that is an H-E-B bowl, right? That is yeah. a, you Haven bought that. that key, is a, Haven and Key, yeah. Haven and Key, one of our okay. new, new lines. Now, y'all, see, here I go. I'm just going to take this and dump these guys straight in there. I'm going to give this a little stir. Here we go. So, again, you're throwing them at the last second because they're already pre-cooked. They're yep. already ready to roll. You're just going to give them a little flavor. And they've there. already, so they, they're not going to absorb too much of that liquid, right? They're just going to, like, warm up, get good. I'm going to leave that on low, and I'm going to put a lid on top of this. Kind of let that go for a minute. Our chicken's doing its wonderful thing. Here it's searing up. Christy, also, the way you know your oatmeal's done, just taste it every once in a while intermittently if you're doing steel cut. When it's, as soon as it's kind of like that little toothy where it's just soft enough, that's usually where you want to stop. So when I make oats, um, I like them to be really creamy and like really kind of like loose. So I don't like them to stand up like mashed potatoes. I like them to just kind of, you know. Fall. Like, yeah, to fill the Soup. bowl. 
So <laughs> the, what do you call it? Oat soup. Yes. Um, so I usually add in more, um, more liquid. You can continually add more liquid if you want. Um, but again, like Tompkins said, eventually it just becomes porridge. Por <laughs> All right. So for our grains, you can see they've sort of popped open. And don't, I, I, for when it comes to farro, and especially these cooked, quick cook grains, I don't worry if there's leftover liquid in the bowl at all or in the pot. And all I do, it's a very simple thing. I bring this guy over here. The uh, chef, your timer, it out. your timer went off for the rice. On the you rice. Think it's done? I'm a little bit scared about the rice. <laughs> mm, these are perfect. You can see in there, I'm going to bring it over here. And you can see, just like this, you can see how they've sort of opened up. And they look feathery. Can you all tell that? You probably can't. Dang it, I love but, farro. Hey. I love farro, man. All right. It's so good. Now, if I was going to use this right here for um, like maybe like a cold pasta or a cold salad, I would take this and throw it directly into the refrigerator. Maybe put it on a sheet pan um, and give it some more cool space. Sticker. Let the uh, moisture evaporate. I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes. All I'll right, my it, rice, chef. it's I got done. My eye on it. Is it done? Well, the timer went off, chef. Okay, y'all. The timer, <laughs> I, Yo, I. Here we go. I'm kind of like, I don't know. We don't know what we're going to find. All right. How'd we do? All right, we're going to peel back. How did back. our cartouche work? Okay, so I got our cartouche. So you can see in there. Let me see. I need a fork. Uh, I got all right. a fork right here. Right. I did turn it off for a while. So you can see that the quinoa has sprouted. Oh, we're going to fluff with but the fork. But if I can plug the Dutch oven, this okay, is why see. I use a Dutch oven because they, they're iron and they hold right. so much heat that right. it still held the heat long enough even when it was off. It's all right. I mean, it's al dente, but it's okay. I turn, the, I turn the stove off. You win some, you lose some, right? It's what happens when you do it live. Hey, man, all right. that's all right. So what we would do at this point, right, I'm going to add in some of our leftover parsley to this, and we're going to add in a little bit of olive oil, which I keep moving around the kitchen and can't remember what I put up. Here it is. Charlotte, I got a question Go. from Shoot. Pam on Facebook. Yep. Can uh, she sub grits for any of these grains? Absolutely. You can sub any of the... Um, any of the grains. Any you just have to, maybe you have to monitor how much uh, liquid um, you're you'd have use, to use, depending on Make sure, thing. yeah, so like is it going to be quick cook or, um, right, so instant grits, make sure they're, they're not that. I'm going to put a little more salt in that. I love those grits, cook Pam. In no time. Yeah. love grits, sweet or savory. And then when I make grits, I do a five to one ratio, so five cups of liquid to one cup of, of um, grain. Like That'll creamy. be just fine. I'm going to flip my chicken. How's the chicken doing? I can it's smell it. Fantastic. All right. Some tan lines. That guy needs a little bit more time. Right. All right. We're going to let that go a little bit longer. In the meantime, look at this guy. Ooh la la. It's all coming together. There's so many smells right now. Oh my gosh. I like the way the oatmeal's looking. I do too. Every pan on the stove is actually one of our K&T pans, by the way, in case you're wondering. Okay, we're gonna leave that there. Okay, lentils, farro. So the reason why typically you would let grains kind of like take off the lid and let them sit for a little bit is you want more of that moisture to evaporate so you get those really good like individual grains. It doesn't get mushy. Um, I'm going to make our yogurt real quick. So this is going to be our sauce for our veggies. We're going to add in our... Um, I love yogurt-based dips. Rhymes, rhymes with. So our chili rhymes powder. <laughs> We're going to do a smashed garlic. I'm actually going to zest this in there. I'm going to zest it. So it just kind of melts garlic. in there, that garlic flavor. Yo, if you're not into yogurt, Greek yogurt, you could do uh, sour cream. I love the fact, I, I love sour cream. This is not a dig on sour cream. Love sour yeah. cream to death. But I do love the fact that yogurt versus sour cream, especially Greek yogurt, has a little more of that acidic punch, which I yeah. like, which I think works with a lot of things really well. You get what much more tartness from it. So we'll do the lime zest. Again, that essence. So like when you close your eyes and you think of a lime, this is what we're thinking of. The lime zest. All right. Cut this bag up. A little fresh lime juice. Nice I'm not going to lie, y'all. I'm a little bit bummed about my rice. A little bit bummed about my rice. It okay. 
It's totally fine. It is totally I mean, fine. All right, we're going to stir this guy up. Haven and Key White Stern Stoneware Serving Bowl. You're mine. I love that bowl, man. I saw that when you were plating up on the rehearsal, and I was like, what is that? Stop everything. Tell me what it is, because I love that He bowl. did. He tried to put it in his pocket. didn't fit. <laughs> it didn't fit. You know, I tried, too. <laughs> I really those, tried. But not I, in those pans. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm going to check my chicken again. Come here, you guys. How are you doing over here? You got the thin sliced chicken breast. Yeah. Makes it a little easier to cook. Uh -oh. Is anybody cooking along? What are you, what are you anybody? making if you're doing it? Is anybody eating dinner? No, what are we, what are we cook. having? Cook for me. Are we coming over? Am I coming over? What are you making? I'm in. It's all of it. All right. Let's get these grains out or these veggies out. These are going to be absolutely I, beautiful. I can tell you this, Charlotte. Uh, what me. we're making tonight, if you ate everything together, we're a, you got your fiber. Like oh, you man. So you're supposed down. to get about 30 grams of fiber a day. Is it that much, really? Nailed it. Yeah. Oh, look at our veggies. Look we how like, beautiful we those like are. 700 grams of fiber. Look how pretty. Oh, my God. It's beautiful. Look at this. Okay. Nice and caramelized. The bottom of the pan. Right on top. There we go. Go just like that. And we're going to take our yogurt. Right on top, chef. Don't be shy. There we go. Ooh, yeah. Put that right there. All right, dish number one. Done. Let's get our oats. Ta-da. I'm going to move this out Love of the that. way. The whole thing. All Amy, right. Amy said she made lentil chili tonight. I love that, Amy. Ooh. You know, it's the right, it's the right, it's the right weather for it. Currently 34 degrees down here in oh my sunny God, it's super San Antonio. Cold. Okay, here is our beautiful... Look at our oats, yes. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely beautiful. I know the quinoa might be a lot for some people, but I think it adds this like beautiful texture and again that like, you know, diversity in. Megan, I'm coming over to your house. Charlotte and I are coming over because Megan made English muffin pizzas for her kids. And oh my gosh. I'm into that. What toppings did you use? Did everybody get their own? Of course, they're English muffins. You gotta have your own. I'm not hey. sharing my English with anybody. You don't have that bad boy. That's a that's a pizza made for one. Uh oh, come here, chicken. I love it. It's like my first Bridget, day. They're all sharing. Grilling. Bridget made sweet potato soup. I love that sweet potato Ooh. soup. All right, so now I've got our apples, our apple pie filling, basically, and we're just gonna take this, go right on top here, and at this I love point that. you can Great put idea, like Megan. English muffin pizzas. I like that. It's kind of like. The, like the relative to the bagel bite, if you will. Yeah. That's if right. you will. That looks really good. Okay, the apples so here at the we top. go. And then I'm just going to top it off with a little granola. You if know what else not this into needs? apples. Can I say it's not, it's, this is not New You 2022 friendly, but a la mode, big old fat scoop of ice cream on top. I guess like all the healthy fibers <laughs> sort of like negates. Right? The, right? You no, know, if you wanted to, right? All right. So we got that. Coming back over here the to my chicken. grains. So the reason, did we talk about why we fluff with a fork and not a spoon? No. Oh, Tell us. Okay. Glad we're having this conversation. So we're letting all this extra um, moisture evaporate. The reason why we fluff with a fork is that what we're trying to do is like pick up the grains and sort of like grate them and scrape them across the bottom um, without mushing them and packing them together, right? So again, the whole point of this whole process, this peel-off method, was to have these beautiful individual free-flowing grains. Like if you look at, they don't stick together, right? Which is really nice. So fluff with a fork, don't smush with a spoon. Oh my gosh, fluff with a fork, don't smush with a spoon. I made a thing, I said a thing. <laughs> I'll always remember that now. It was, it was a fluff, what is it again? Say fluff it again. with a fork, don't smush with a spoon, but now I'm gonna don't serve it, so. Don't smush with a spoon. Now you're gonna smush it with a spoon. No. That's all right, it's an aerated it's all spoon. Right. You're being gentle. I am. All right, we got this guy here. You know what I'm going to add to this? Tell me. Besides a little bit more olive oil. Always got to have the olive oil. I know, right? I'm going to add a little lemon juice. What do you think about that? I love that, that little fresh acid. Yeah. Love it. Brighten everything up. 
little vitamin C. All right, my chicken. My chicken, guys. Ready to go? Yes. Looks yeah, good to me. It does look good. You know, to me. I don't mind mine a little rare, Charlotte. I know people think that's weird. But I'll, yeah, I'm a little. I'm, I'm okay with that. A little rare is fine with me. I got a solid microbiome. This is also public health domain. Please don't, don't eat, eat your chicken. chicken rare, and please cook your chicken <laughs> to the appropriate temperature of 165. Uh, all right, fine. I'll eat it cooked this time. <laughs> Thanks. I guess I'm Duncan. the only one that likes the uh, chicken tartare. Sure right? The done. only one that likes yeah, chicken tartare. Am I the only one that does that? Probably. All right, here we go. I'll take these two pieces because I know these guys are done. All right, take our chicken. Here we go. This is it. This is it, guys. We had a question about a vegan alternative to Greek yogurt. There are actually some really great yogurts that HEB actually sells now. We do an almond and I believe a coconut uh, yogurt that yes. you can use in place of your uh, Greek yogurt. They're both good. I'll put this guy. I believe they're just HEB organics. I'm probably off yeah. on that. It may just be HEB brand. There are so many different types of yogurt. Great. There's also Kite. I know Kite Hill is one of the brands. It's oh a, my it's gosh. a uh, Greek. They have a Greek style almond and coconut yogurt. Oh my God. Both great alternatives to Greek. I'm gonna Look clear off this looks. whole table. Look at, that, Look at this guy. I love it. You know what we could also do? We could also put that Greek yogurt on top of this dish. Put it on everything. I mean, this is fantastic right here. So we have our cumin dusted veggies with that delicious chili lime yogurt and our grains in here were our quick cook farro and some lentils, which are legumes. Then we've got our still cut oats with that warm apple compote, which is like apple pie. It's so good. We top that with a little granola. So you could put nuts or whatever you guys want. Ice cream. There. Um, Tompkins would put ice cream. And then we have our chicken. So we have our harissa marinated chicken with our um, brown rice and quinoa. And I love it. And if you guys have never tried quinoa before, like I've given you a couple of different ways to try it. You can buy it in a package, microwave it, no big deal. Um, right. We also have all sorts of frozen grains, so I actually brought some with me. Oh, wait, I'll show you. If you I don't like you. quinoa, you can always try quinoa. So we also Similar. have like brown rice, frozen brown rice. You just throw this guy in the microwave, right? So a great hack. super easy. You could get all of this wonderful um, produce that's pre-chopped and then you know, make your life really, really easy. Um, and then of course, if for some reason you are avoiding those grains, we do have like rice cauliflower. Um, you definitely wouldn't put, you wouldn't cook it quite as long, but the same flavors apply there. Um, poor cauliflower, it's everything to everyone. You've got the weight of the world on your shoulders, little, Man, little vegetable. You, that, that, is a, that is a vegetable that does um, it all. And that's it, super easy. Um, grains, I hope everybody walked easy, away easy. with like foundation on how to cook some grains. It's fantastic. Chef, you are great. Uh, yeah, don't forget, you. you can always check out the, uh, for future classes, always go to hbcom slash classes. The link is right there. You can always go to our website, uh, the YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash right. Check out all the fantastic stuff that we've done the past year and even in the past weeks. Uh, Charlotte, what are you doing next week? You got a class with our dietitian, Lorena, who was here last night. She's fantastic. We're going to talk about dairy. We're gonna talk about dairy and how incorporating dairy and in, like you know into a healthy diet. And I'm cooking so many things with yogurt, so many different things, all there the types go. of yogurt. It's gonna be great. And Lenaine is brilliant. She's such a foodie. She's great. She's been a lot of fun. I love it. Thank you guys so much. Um, again, if you miss anything, YouTube, and can't wait to see you back.